19 for three weeks. Today is four weeks that I am determined to finish Psalm 119 today. So I'm going to have to go fast, and that means I can't make any comments on the verses which I want to make, but not going to be able to if, and finish it. And I don't want to spend another week on it. I don't want you to get bored with the, going over the same song, the same material, even though I wouldn't get bored, but I don't want you to get bored with it. And so I want to finish Psalm 119. Last week, we ended with verse 114. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in the word. Where do we run when we have a problem? Where do we run to when the enemy attacks? We run to the word of God because the word of God is the answer. The word of God is, is our stronghold. It's our hope. It is our shelter in the midst of the storm. We run to the word of God. And we hide under the shadow of the Almighty. The Word of God is everything that we need. The New Living Translation says, You are my refuge and my shield. Your Word is my source of hope. Isn't that the truth? We have no hope with, apart from the glorious written Word of God. Verse 115, depart from me, ye evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. Remember, uh, over and over in every verse of Psalm 119, we have a key word that is referring to the law, the Torah. Remember, we say today that the Torah is the Pentateuch, the first five books of, of the law. But no, law, according to the Jewish rabbis, the law, the Torah, it means instruction. It means teaching. And so every verse, as we cover this, we have in our English Bibles a different word pertaining to the Word of God. We may have in our English Bible testimonies, ways, precepts, statutes, commandments, judgments. And as we go through these verses, we saw these different key words in each verse, which is referring to the Torah, the Word of God. Verse 116, uphold me according to what? How? The word why that i may live and let me not be ashamed of my hope in other words do not let my hope be crushed verse 117 hold thou me up have you ever fallen and felt like you were just too weary to get up hold thou me up and i shall be saved and i will have respect unto or I will meditate on is a better translation what the psalmist said he's going to meditate on thy statutes another word in our English Bible for the Torah the word of God I'll meditate on your statutes every now and then just when I feel like it just on a good day no continually we're to meditate on the Word of God, especially when we don't feel like it. That's the time we need the Word of God the most. Verse 118, Thou hast trodden down all them that err from thy statutes, for their deceit is falsehood. The New Living Translation says, But you have rejected all who stray from your decrees, are principles. They are only fooling themselves. Isn't that the truth? We can't make it without the Word of God. We can't make it without the Lord. Even though the enemy tries to tell us, you can do this on your own. You don't need to go to church. You don't need to study the Word. 
You can make it. No, we're only fooling ourselves when we think that. Verse 119, thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, I love thy what? Testimonies. That the word remember, it means witness. It means precept of God. Verse 120, my flesh trembleth for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgment. No, we're not to be literally terrified and afraid of God, but it, we're to have a respect, an awe, a reverence, a respect for the Lord. Verse 120 in the Amplified says, My flesh trembles and shudders for fear and reverential, worshipful awe of you. That is the fear of God that we are, are to have, reverential, worshipful all. And I have met people that they've been browbeaten by pastors, preachers. They've been browbeaten with the Word of God until they have developed a literal fear of God. I'll never forget, I, I counseled one lady years ago she would come to the altar and she would just cry and sob because she had a literal fear of God. It was to the point that she was tormented. She would wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat, just so tormented and afraid of God. Why? That was the enemy trying to bombard her mind with fear. That was the wrong kind of fear. We are not to be terrified of God. We're to have a reverential respect and a worshipful awe of God, not a literal fear. Fear is from the enemy. Fear has torment, the Word of God says. So anything that brings torment, that's of the enemy. Then Jesus said, Peace, I leave with you my peace I give unto you, not as the world give it, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Verse 121, I have done judgment and justice. In other words, a better translation, I have done what is just and I've done what is right. Leave me not to mine oppressors. Verse 122, be surety for thy servant for good. Let not the proud oppress me. The New Living Translation says, please guarantee a blessing for me. Don't let the arrogant oppress me. Now look at, look at verse 122 again. Be thou surety for thy servant for good, the King James says. This verse 122 is the only verse out of 176 verses in Psalm 119 that Hebrew scholars say does not have a direct reference for the Word of God. Translated like I said in our English Bible as law, testimonies, ways, precepts, statutes, commandments, judgments, Oh, but rabbis say, and I got this straight from my Tehillim, my Hebrew commentary on the book of Psalms, and in my Tehillim, verse 122, the commentary on this verse says that the Hebrew word for good in our English Bible, the Hebrew word is tov, T-O-V which means good. Now let me read you a quote from my Tehillim, my Hebrew commentary on the book of Psalms. Each of this Psalms, 176 verses, except verse 122, contains at least one synonym for Torah, or the word of God. Verse 122 contains the word tov. The Hebrew word is T-O-V which is translated good in our English Bible. And the, the, he, the rabbis say that verse 122, the Hebrew word tov, good, which some explain to refer to Torah as well. Isn't the word of God tov? Isn't the word of God good? Yes, it is. So out of 176 verses, what, verse 122 is the only one that doesn't have a direct reference to the Torah, the Word of God, but it has the word good, tov, and the 
Psalm 23, mine eyes fail for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness. The New Living Translation says, my eyes strain to see your rescue, to see the truth of your promise fulfilled. Verse 124, deal with thy servant according unto thy mercy, and what keep me thy statutes. I like the New Living Translation of this verse. It says, I am your servant. Deal with me in unfailing love, and teach me your decrees or your principles. Oh, we need to pray this daily. When I open the word of God, I pray, God, teach me your word. Teach me your word. Holy Spirit, you're my teacher. You live within me. Teach me the word of God. Verse 125, I'm thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies, your witness, your precepts, O oh Lord. Give me understanding. That was what King Solomon prayed. He said, God, give me an understanding heart. Give me wisdom to know how to lead this, this, this great people. And God said, because you've asked for wisdom and not silver and gold, I'm going to give you silver and gold in abundance, but I'm also going to give you wisdom. And other than the Lord Jesus Christ, King Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. And what was his first prayer is give me an understanding heart. Give me wisdom to know you and understand your word. Verse 126, it is time for me, Lord, to work or to act, for they have made void thy law. Verse 127, therefore I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. Can we say that? Can we say I love the word of God more than I love money? Oh, a lot of, a lot of Christians can't say that. But if we'll put the word first, then the Lord will bless us with finances. He'll bless us with everything that we need when we put him first and put his word first. David did. He said, I love your commandments above gold, yea, above fine or refined, the finest gold. Verse 128, therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. The New Living Translation says each of your commandments is right. That is why I hate every false way. Verse 129, thy testimonies are wonderful, therefore doth my soul keep them. The New Living Translation says your laws, your decrees are wonderful. No wonder I obey them. The word of God is good and we should delight to obey and keep and follow the instructions in the word of God. Verse 130. I love this verse. The entrance of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Look at the message translation there in your handout. Break open your word. Let the light shine out. Let ordinary people see the meaning. Oh, I like that translation, don't you? The entrance of God's word gives light. Whatever we need understanding on, whatever subject, whatever area in our life that we need God's wisdom, that we need his direction, that we need his understanding, we go to the word of God. What does the word of God do? It gives light. It shows us the path to take. Oh, it shows us and, it, and the word directs us and leads us and guides us to make the correct decision. I've made some pretty wrong decisions in my life. How about you? If I had just gone to the word of God, took time to get in the word and pray, the Holy Spirit would have illuminated that word. Thy word is a what? Lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's been our key verse as we've gone through Psalm 119, the word of 
God will shine a light on our path and show us the next step to take. Or when we come to a crossroads and we don't know which way to, to go, the word of God, it will direct us, lead us, guide us to say, no, you're getting ready to make a long term. Don't, don't go down that path. Don't make that decision. That is not my will for your life. And when we are obedient and obey the word of God, we will walk in his perfect will for our life. And I don't want his good, I don't want his acceptable, but I want his perfect will for my life. How about you? Oh, I, I said I couldn't comment. It's four long cities, 176 verses. I've got to stop making comments and just read. Verse 131, I opened my mouth and panted, for I longed for thy commandment. As, I got to see, as the deer, as the heart panted for the water brook, so panted my soul after thee, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The psalmist David, being a shepherd out in the field, he had looked up and he had saw a deer running and he had saw the, the deer's tongue hanging out, panting, longing for the fresh water, fresh stream. But he had also saw that deer being chased by an enemy, whether a lion, tiger, whatever, hot on the trails of that deer. And the deer knew it couldn't stop, even though it was panting for the water brook. Oh, that's what the psalmist David said. That's the way I am about your word, Lord. I opened my mouth. I panted for I longed for thy commandment. Oh, thy precepts, your law, your word. Verse 132, look thou upon me and be merciful unto me as thou usest to do unto those that love thy name. Now, in the Hebrew... Our, that phrase in our English Bible, as thou usest to do, that phrase is one Hebrew word, which is judgment. Judgment is number 8199 is the root word, but this word judgment in this verse is 4941 mishpat, and it means verdict, pronounce judicially, sentence, or a decree. It's a judge and jury scene. It is a courtroom scene. And so even though we don't see it in our English Bible, this phrase, as thou usest to do, is this Hebrew word mishpat, which is translated in other verses in Psalm 119, the King James translators translated it as judgment. Well, that's the way they, they should have translated it in here in verse 132. But you remember, the King James translators were not consistent so many times in their translation. Verse 132 in the New Living Translation says, Come and show me your mercy as you do for all who love your name. The Amplified Translation says, Look upon me, be merciful unto me, and show me favor, as is your way to those who love your name. Oh, God, give me favor. I pray that continually, and I receive favor. People are just inclined to show me favor. I walked in the herb store yesterday, and we're going to buy some herbs. And the lady said, you know, I, let me just give you this. And I thought, favor. And when, when I go to Walmart, when I turn at the, at the red light, I start praying, God, give me favor. Give me a, give me a parking space that I don't have to walk. Especially if it's raining or cold. Oh, I want a close parking lot. So what I do, I pray for favor. Give me favor. Verse 133, open or order 
The word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Verse 134, deliver me from the oppression of man, so will I keep thy precepts. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant and teach me thy statutes. Verse 135 in the New Living Translation, look at your hand out. Look upon me with, with love and keep me your decrees or principles. I like that. As King James, make your face to shine upon your servant. But the New Living says, look upon me with love and keep me your decrees or your principles. Verse 136, rivers of waters run down my eyes because they keep not thy law. The wicked, those who do not obey the word, we can think of our lost loved ones. We can cry, pray, intercede for them to come to know the Lord as their Savior and have a personal relationship with him. Verse 137, righteous art thou, O God, and upright are thy judgments. Thy testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. The New Living Translation says, your laws or your decrees are perfect and completely trustworthy. Verse 139, my zeal hath consumed me because my enemies have forgotten thy word. Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. I like the New Living Translation of verse 140. Your promises have been thoroughly tested. That is why I love them so much. The word is tested, it's tried, it's purified, and there's more than fine gold. Oh, the word is very pure, and David said, your servant loves your word. Verse 141, I'm small and despised, yet do not I forget thy precepts. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Pilate asked the question, what is truth? Truth was standing right before him. Jesus is, he was the living word of God in flesh. He is truth, his word is truth, and the word of God, thy law is truth. Truth. The New Living Translation says, Your justice is eternal and your instructions are perfectly true. Trouble and anguish have taken hold upon me, yet thy commandments are my delight. The New Living Translation says, As pressure and stress bear down on me, I find joy in your commandments. What hell does David say? All those years he was having to run from Saul and hide in caves and, and run for his life. It was the commandments. It was the word of God. When trouble, when anguish, when fear took hold upon me, then David said, your commandments was my delight. I delighted in your word. I found hope in your word. I found the courage to go on another day from your word. Verse 144, the righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. I cried with my whole heart. Hear me, O Lord. I will keep thy statutes. The New Living Translation says, I pray with all my heart. Answer me, Lord. I will obey your decrees or your principles. That's what we've got to do is cry out unto the Lord when we're going through trials, when we're going through problems, when we're going through testing. Verse 146, I cried unto thee, save me. A better translation says, I cry out to you, save me, and I shall keep thy testimonies. When we're under attack, when the enemy is hot on our trail, trying to overtake us, trying to overwhelm us, what do we do? The same thing David did, cry out unto the Lord. And what's he going to do? He's going to save us. He's going to rescue us from our enemies. Verse 147, I prevented the dawning of the morning and cried. 
the sun from coming up good and just like we can't keep the sun from coming up in the morning that's not what this means in the hebrew the amplified says i anticipated the dawning of the morning and cried in childlike prayer i hope in your word we can't keep the sun from coming up but we can be so excited to get up and read the word of God and we can be so excited to walk with the Lord that day so we just can't wait till morning comes. We're just, we're just on our pins and knees. We're anticipating the dawning of the morning of another day that we can live for God, another day that we can serve God, and another day that we can open up his glorious word and let the word of God minister to us, speak to us, bring life to us. Verse 148, mine eyes present the night watches that I might meditate in thy word. That's another King James translation. Just as you like, we can't keep the sun from coming up in the morning. We can't keep the sun from going down in the evening, can we? The Amplified says, my eyes anticipate the night watches and I am awake before the cry of the watchman that I may meditate on your word. David said, I anticipate the night time. I wake up early in the morning before the cry of the watchman, before the sound of the trumpet announcing daybreak. It, David said, I'm anticipating I, I wake up long before daylight so that I can meditate on your word. Verse 149, hear my voice according unto thy loving kindness, O Lord, quicken me according to thy judgment. Quicken, bring life. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Oh, hallelujah. The Word of God is alive. It's living. It's breathing. The Word of God, when God spoke like me, like was created, and it's still being created at the speed of 186,000 miles per second. Why? Because God spoke. God spoke said his word is alive and when we read the word of God that word of God is going to quicken our mortal bodies bring life to our mortal bodies verse 150 they draw nigh that follow after mischief they are far from thy law that are near O Lord and thy commandments are true concerning thy testimonies I have known of old that thou hast founded them forever. And the better translation says, I have known that your decree, your word, never changes. And isn't that the truth? Verse 153, consider my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget thy Law. The New Living Translation says, Look upon my suffering and rescue me, for I have not forgotten your instruction. Plead my cause and deliver me. Quicken me according to thy word. I love the New Living Translation of verse 154. It says, Argue my case. Take my side. Protect my life as you promised. We have the best advocate, the best attorney, the best lawyer there is. Jesus is our mediator. He is our defense attorney, and he's going to argue our case. When the accuser of the brethren comes, when the Satan comes, and when the enemy comes to accuse us, God, he will argue. He will stand in our behalf. He will take our side. He will argue our case. And he will say that in the courtroom of heaven, our case is already decided. And God, the righteous judge, his gavel will fall and he will give us 
the verdict of not guilty. Not guilty whatever sin we committed, whatever we've done in the past, when we repent, God gavel of justice falls and he says, not guilty. Their sin is covered by the blood of my son. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to have to hurry if we're going to make it through verse 156 today. Verse 155 of Psalm 119. Salvation is far from who? The righteous? No. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they seek not thy statutes. Great are thy tender mercies, O Lord. Quicken me according to thy judgment. Many are my persecutors and my enemies, yet do I not decline from thy testimonies. The psalmist David fought enemies continually, and he said, many are my persecutors. Many, I've got many enemies, but I'm not going to turn loose of your word. I'm going to hold on to your word. I beheld the transgressors and was grieved because they kept not thy word. Consider how I love thy precepts. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy loving kindness. Notice as we go through these verses of Psalm 119, how many times David says, Quicken me, give me life. Don't you know, time after time, he almost despaired of life when he was, and when Saul was just so close to overtaking him. And he, David knew that if Saul ever had the opportunity, he would kill him instantly and show him no mercy. So David cried out, quicken me, quicken me. Don't forsake me, O Lord. But why? Because I love your word, he said. The New Living Translation says, See how I love your commandments, Lord. Give back my life because of your unfailing love. Verse 160, Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. Oh, I pray that on occasion. God, all me. Oh, give me a fresh revelation. Give me a fresh nugget from the word of God that I've never saw before. All me today in your word. Verse 162. I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil or great treasure. The word of God is a treasure. That word of God in your lap is your most valuable possession because the word of God will teach you, show you how to get money. If the word of God will teach you, the word of God will bring healing to your body to save your finances from having to pay out in medical bills. The word of God is the answer for everything in your life. And we are to rejoice and to consider the word so valuable that as if we have found a great treasure. And if you remember the parable of the treasure hidden in the field, and the, the man sold all he had to buy that field. Why? To get that treasure. Well, the word of God in your lap is the greatest treasure. It's the most valuable thing that you have. Verse 163, I hate and abhor lying, but thy law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgment. The Amplified says seven times a day and all day long do I praise you because of your righteous decree. How many of you get up in the morning and you praise God and you can be happy and then you walk out the door and what happens? Life sets in. You go to work. Or somebody cuts you off in traffic. Or are we going to keep that same happiness and rejoicing and praise in our hearts? David said seven times a day. And all day long do I praise you. Why? Because of your righteous decree. Verse 165. Great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. Oh, hallelujah. We can not only have peace, but we can have great peace. How? Through the word of God, we can have great peace. When we'll put the word first, when we'll make a decision that we will love the word, we'll turn the word, we'll give the word every day. Then we'll
will not just have peace, but we will have great peace. The Amplified says, great peace have they who love your law. Nothing shall offend them or make them stumble. I tell you, I've tripped and fallen in life before. I've made bad decisions before. But if I had taken time to go to the Word first, to pray, to seek God, I would not have tripped. I would not have stumbled over that trap that the enemy had laid for me. Oh, I want to have God's peace, but not only will the Word bring peace, but great peace. If we we'll put the Word first, great peace have they who love your law. Nothing shall offend them or make them stumble. We won't trip and fall and get into sin or get out of the will of God when we put the word of God first place. Verse 166, Lord, I have hoped for thy salvation and done thy commandments. The New Living Translation says, I long for your rescue, Lord. So I have obeyed your command. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes rescue from the storms, the tests, the trials don't come instantly, does it? That's where we have to stand. And that's where we have to say, God, I'm holding on to your word because I know you're going to bring me out of this. I know you're going to rescue me from this trial, this test, this storm. Verse 167, my soul has kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. Look at your hand out. The New Living Translation says, I have obeyed your laws. Why? For I love them very much. How much do you love the word of God? Enough to be like David, to wake up in the middle of the night and say, oh, I just love to hear your word so much. I'm going to meditate on the word until daylight. And oh, I just can't wait till daybreak. I'm going to get up and first thing, I'm going to read the Word of God. How much do you love the Word of God? The psalmist David said, I love your statutes. I love your testimonies. I love your laws exceedingly. I love them very much. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies for all <laughs> my ways are before thee. Or you know everything I do is a better translation. There's nothing that we can do that God hasn't known about it even before the thought entered our mind to do it. Verse 169, let my cry come near before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. Let my supplication come before thee. Deliver me according to thy word. The New Living Translation says, Listen to my prayer. Rescue me as you promised. And we can say, God, your word says that you'll deliver me out of all trouble. Your word says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. And I know you're going to deliver me out of this trial, out of this problem or two. And he will, because he's faithful to honor his word. Verse 171, my lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. The New Living Translation says, let praise flow from my lips. For you have taught me your decrees or your principles. The psalmist David said, I'm going to praise you with my lips. Now, praise is just going to flow forth from my lips because of your word. Verse 172, my tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. The New Living Translation says, let my tongue sing about your word, for all your commands are right. The psalmist said, we have 150 psalms or songs in our Bible. And we used to, at, at the church I attended years ago, we had to open our Bibles to the book of Psalms, and we would sing the psalms. I love it. 
That's what David did. He wrote most of them, and he also sung them. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for thy commandments are righteous. Now, look at the New Living Translation one more time. Let my tongue sing about your word, for all your commandments are right. Let my hand, or let thy hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. The New Living Translation says, give me a helping hand. Don't we all need a helping hand when we're like Peter about to see? What do we do? We, we're like Peter. Lord, help me. What did Jesus do? Did he say, blood, 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 you got to wait. you got to suffer a little longer, Peter, because you've been so disobedient. And can't you see Pete going down for the last time? Is that what Jesus did? No. Jesus, when he said, Lord, help me, Jesus immediately stretched out his hand, took hold of Peter's hand, pulled him back up, and they walked on the water together back to the boat. Let thy hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. I've chosen your law. I've chosen your commandments. And I need a helping hand, Lord, at this time. And I know you're going to give me a, the help I need because I have put your word first place. I have walked, chosen to walk in obedience to your word. Verse 174, I have longed for thy salvation, O Lord, and thy law is my delight. Do you delight in the word of God? He wants you to and put the word first. Verse 175, let my soul live and it shall praise thee and let thy judgment help me. The New Living Translation says, let me live so I can praise you and may your regulations or your laws help me. Verse 176, I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. The New Living Translation says, I have wandered away like a lost sheep. Come and find me, for I have not forgotten your commandments. Have you ever walked it so far away from God? And as the, our Baptist term used to be, backslid and gotten so far away from God, the enemy said, you'll never and find your way back to the Lord. You've gone too far. You've sinned too much. Oh, you've blown it this time. God won't take you back. Even if you pray and repent, you have gone too far. No, that's not what the Word says. The New Living Translation says, I've wandered away like a lost sheep. Come and find me. The hound of heaven, the Holy Spirit, will seek us, will will." Be that dog on that trail. He will seek us. He will find us. He will not let us go because we belong to the Lord. The message translation says, And should I wander off like a lost sheep, seek me. I'll recognize the sound of your voice. Oh, that one lost sheep that has wandered from the fold. Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. And the good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. Jot down John chapter 10 verse 27. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Have you wandered away from the word of God? Have you wandered away from the commandments? Have you backslidden as the Baptist term is? Have you gotten away? Have you lost that closeness and that love for the Lord and love for his word? that you once had. Call out, cry out to God. God, I've wandered away. I've let my first love slip. I've let it grow cold. But I want that relationship that I once had. I want that closeness that I once had with you. Oh, hear me I, when I'm calling out to you. And God will come running to our rescue. He'll pick us up with the staff of his word. And he will pick us up in his loving arms, wrap his arms of love around us, and say, Welcome home, my child. You wandered from the sheepfold, but now you're home. Now you're back with me where you belong. 
and he don't shower us with his love. Oh, but we don't have to wander off anymore. We can come back to the Lord and make the commitment to walk with him each and every day of our life. The psalmist David did, and we've just gone through 176 verses of Psalm 119, all talking about the glory of incorruptible, indestructible, 